these handouts with the photograph, which is Exhibit 1. This lawsuit was already pending, correct? Mm, yeah. So what was that? That was really bad body language from Joe Exotic. Hey everybody, it's Jeff Doherty. I'm the president of Litigation IQ, a trial consulting firm. I'm here today with another Litigation IQ review, this time, Joe Exotic. So one of the most important things that I do as a trial consultant, I think it's one of the things that has the most um, impact on the outcome of a trial is I prepare witnesses to testify for depositions and for trial. Over the years, I've interviewed hundreds and hundreds of actual jurors, and I've recognized and I've realized that the delivery of the testimony is oftentimes more important than what the testimony actually is. So for jurors, they judge credibility based on the tone of voice and in the presentation of the witness. Is this a witness that I think I can believe? Is this a person that seems believable, likable, somebody that I can trust? So today I just wanna show you a few clips from Joe Exotic's deposition and how his body language, his demeanor, his tone of voice, really the delivery of his testimony really ruined his credibility. It's not really what he said, it's how he said what he said. And why is this even important? Well, it applies in so many areas of our lives. The way that we present ourselves can have an impact as to whether people are gonna believe us, they're gonna trust us, they're gonna like us. So here we go, let's get into it. We are now on the record in the matter of Big Cat Rescue okay. Corps. Stop already, what's wrong here? I know he didn't even start talking yet, but what is he wearing? He's wearing a t-shirt, it looks like it's an Iron Man t-shirt. Iron Man the movie, um, nothing wrong with Iron Man. But for a deposition, it's really not appropriate. It, it says that he's not taking this seriously. He's wearing a baseball hat too. So he's really dressed too casually for the situation. Uh, it's not that he has to wear a suit, but maybe a nice polo would have been appropriate and it would raise his credibility a little bit. But here he's, he's just not dressed appropriately for the setting. And why does this even matter? Well, clips of the deposition can be shown to the jury at trial. And it also tells the opposing lawyer that he's really not taking this seriously. So he's opening himself up for attacks. All right, let's get back into it. In the matter of Big Cat Rescue Corp versus Big Cat Rescue Entertainment, this is the videotape deposition of Joe uh, Shri Revogel. Shri Revogel. Okay. So what he does there is pretty good, actually. His, um, his body language is good. His body position is neutral. He's got a pleasant expression on his face, which is good. Um, kind of engenders um, feelings of, of warmth. And he smiles and he's patient. He lets the um, court reporter, he's, the court reporter's trying to swear him in and he kind of mispronounces his name. And Joe's polite about it. He just waits for the guy to make an attempt at it and the guy messes it up, so Joe corrects him but he does it in a polite way. And I think that's good. And uh, really what he should have done is maintain that same demeanor and that same kind of professionalism throughout the deposition. But you'll see in the next few clips that what happens is he, he starts to get tired, he starts to get annoyed and it really shows. And when he um, behaves in a way that shows that he's tired and annoyed and he doesn't want to be there, his credibility diminishes. All right, let's watch the next clip. Are you familiar with uh, one of your videos that you titled Carol Baskin Saga 39, Killing Innocent Rabbits? Um, I remember doing... All right, stop right there. So what's he doing right now? He's listening to the question, but he's got a document in front of him. And this is kind of a cardinal rule when you're being deposed and also when you're on the witness stand. If somebody's asking you a question, and you've got a document in front of you, don't look at the document, listen to the question, address the question, process the question, make sure you know what you're being asked. And if you need to look at something in the document, then look at the document. But if you're looking at a document while the lawyer is asking you questions, your attention is divided and you're probably gonna make mistakes. And in a deposition or at trial, that'll cause you all sorts of problems. That applies to everyday life too. When somebody's talking to you, if your attention is divided, well, that person knows. It's obvious if you're looking at your phone, for instance, you're not paying attention to that person and you're probably not really engaged 
and it sends a message to the person that you're talking to or the person you're engaging with you know they would like your attention and if you're not giving it to them it's just it's not polite and why does that even matter well what if it's your boss or what if it's a client and you have this habit of looking at your phone or having your attention divided between one two or three things it's going to hurt your credibility in those circumstances so it's something to keep in mind um, for everyday life but in a deposition or a trial it's extremely important because the questions coming from the opposing lawyer are really designed to get you to agree with their version of what the facts mean and so if you're not paying attention if you're looking at a document you may miss something very crucial to um, the point of the question you might agree to something that's not true or you might say something that you don't necessarily agree with or agree with a position that's not really accurate all right let's get back to it that up why did i set that up uh, to start posting uh, the truth about Carol Baskin for a change. All right, look at his facial expression right here. You can tell he's kind of annoyed. He's trying to make a point that there's something wrong with Carol Baskin. And really, he should have just had a more professional demeanor, more professional tone of voice. You also notice that he's flipping through papers again. So he's he's thinking, he's looking at a document. He's probably not necessarily processing the question properly. Um, so all he really needs to do is just have a, a, a positive tone of voice and just say, well, I set that up because I wanted to post the truth about Carol Baskin, just in an affirmative way. But instead he has this kind of uh, sarcastic grin on his face. Um, he looks frustrated or annoyed. And that just doesn't come across well to a jury. And what Joe needs to remember is that these clips and what he's doing here in this deposition might be shown to a jury. All right, let's check the next clip. At the time that you were handing out these handouts with the photograph, which is exhibit one, this- All right, stop. Hey, you can see right now, Joe, he's annoyed, he's tired, he's rubbing his neck, he's, um, he looks frustrated. And, you know, after talking to jurors, what I've learned is they don't like this kind of nonverbal behavior. One of the things that I hear from jurors all the time is, when that witness touched his face, I knew he was lying. When that witness was shifting around in his chair, I knew he was uncomfortable. And the reason why he's uncomfortable is because he's lying. For, for people on the jury, what they're looking for oftentimes is who's being honest with me and who's being dishonest with me. And a lot of times what they'll do is they'll interpret behavior like touching the face, shifting in your chair, looking a little agitated or restless. Um, they'll interpret that as nervousness. And then they'll interpret nervousness as lying. The reason why you're nervous is because you're lying. So his, his body language here is just, it's unprofessional. Um, it shows that he's, he's had it, he's worn out. And what it also does is it, is it signals to the opposing lawyer that he's tired. And that's when witnesses become very vulnerable when they're tired. And when the, when the opposing lawyer can tell that they can sense it, then they start to really push and they push. And that's when they get witnesses to admit things that aren't true, admit to things that they don't agree with. Um, or to fight or to argue uh, or to, to, to backpedal. Okay, let's just keep going with this clip here. At the time that you were handing out these handouts with the photograph, which is exhibit one, this lawsuit was already pending, correct? Mm, yeah. And you were aware that Big Cat Rescue... Uh... Okay, here, what, what's Joe doing? He's looking at one lawyer and then he's looking at his own lawyer and it shows shows to me at least that he's he's not focused he's kind of looking around the room he's not really taking the question seriously and he's just winging it i think that's the impression that i get is that he just thinks that he can wing it and maybe that maybe he's used to winging it in life and that's worked for him but here it's not going to work for him because he's got an opponent on the other side who's got a, a particular objective and he's going to accomplish that objective okay let's get back to it big cat rescue uh, did not approve of or authorize your use of this photograph, correct? Yeah, except I didn't make these. Okay, but you participated in the demonstration. Okay, take a look at his facial expressions here too. He's just kind of um, a little bit smug, I guess. Um, kind of a sarcastic tone. And he's also flipping through a bunch of papers again. So he's not paying attention to the question. He's not focused like he should be. Okay, let's get back to it. And you were aware that Big Cat Rescue uh, did not approve of or authorize your use of this photograph, correct? 
Yeah, except I didn't make these. Okay, but you participated in the demonstration and handed them out, correct? Yep. No, actually, I didn't hand them out. I'm the one in the bunny suit. Okay. So he's asked if he was aware if Big Cat Rescue authorized the use of these photos. And the true answer is probably, I don't know. But instead, he tries to outwit the lawyer and say, well, yeah, but I didn't make these. But then the lawyer gets him to admit that he participated in handing them out. So, you know, he's trying to spin and that never gets you anywhere in a deposition. That's not what a deposition is about. It's not about spinning. You just answer the questions in a straightforward fashion. And then he goes back to saying, well, no, actually, I didn't hand them out. But really, at this point, it doesn't matter. I mean, the jury knows that he was involved in distributing photographs. But if you take it way back to the start of the question, the question was... And you were aware that Big Cat Rescue uh, did not approve of or authorize your use of this photograph, correct? I would imagine he never asked. So in reality, he, he just doesn't know one way or another. And that could have been a, a truthful answer. But the truth also might have been, yeah, they didn't authorize it. So then you just stop there. You don't try to argue and get around the question and spin the question. Nobody likes when people are spinning, jurors in particular. But that also applies to everyday life. If somebody asks you a question and you try to spin and dance around and, and maneuver around the question, well, they know that something's going on here. And people typically don't appreciate that. So Joe is a perfect example here of being asked a straightforward question and he's trying to dance around the question and and at that point the answer doesn't matter what the jury is thinking is he did something and he's trying to get out of it and that doesn't look good so it doesn't help him at all but why is this even important what does joe exotic have to do with you or with me uh, well we're confronted with situations in our lives all of the time where we're in difficult situations or where we have to present ourselves in a credible way and if you, if you think back to the very first clip that I showed you, Joe was pleasant. He was confident. He looked like somebody that was likable. And back to what I've learned from jurors is likability and believability go hand in hand. So anytime you or I were confronted with, with a situation where we want to be believed, um, and it may be a stressful situation, who knows what the situation is. Maybe it's something at work or maybe it's a, a colleague or a coworker or a client um, or a potential client. Uh, if you speak with confidence, if you speak, if you're pleasant, if you smile, if you have a good tone of voice, uh, especially a confident tone of voice, no matter what your answer is, if you speak with confidence, that translates to competence. People believe people who seem confident. So I hope you found this um, interesting. I hope you found it helpful. And I would, I'd like to know what you thought about these deposition clips, what you thought about Joe Exotic and about the way that he portrayed himself in his deposition. So if you found this interesting, I hope you did share it with people, um, subscribe, like it. And I plan on putting out a lot more content similar to this. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. So by now everybody knows who Joe Exotic is, I, I would imagine. But if you don't, you should really check out the Netflix special uh, the Tiger King, Murder, Mayhem, and Madness. You're not going to regret it. But I would warn you, there's a lot of foul language. I watched it on VidAngel. I don't know if you've heard of VidAngel before, but you can edit out content that you find objectionable. So uh, if you don't want to expose yourself to a bunch of foul language, I would watch it through VidAngel. Just a little bit of context for what this deposition is. This is Joe Exotic. He's being deposed in a copyright lawsuit in which Big Cat Rescue Corporation sued Joe Exotic for copyright infringement. So that's what the lawsuit is. So he's answering questions under oath for this copyright infringement case.